Guys, there is a lot of things that has changed in this mid-season patch. They were going to be giving you a pre and post review of everything. And I mean everything. Feel free to look down below, guys. There will be timestamps for all of these items, as well as multiple clarifications. Now, before diving into the numbers, in the patch notes, it was mentioned that there was going to be an increase in damage against red and orange bar enemies. So essentially, guys, minor enemies and elites. Keep in mind, this does not include majors, which includes enemies like Lost Sector Bosses, Carl for instance, all the damage values there will remain the same. It's your orange bars, your elites, and your red bars, your miners, that you'll be doing increased damage to. Now, starting with auto rifles, we tested this with a 600 round per minute perpetualist. Our crit damage here against adds was 1,685. Bonnie was 1,055. Now, with the auto rifle buff, which was a 25% damage buff, increased our damage up to 2,106 and 1,318 per body. You probably want to cross. We know we got a 25 percent buff why are you even showing this it's important guys because sometimes Bungie's like yeah 25 percent and then it's like 10 percent we're like what the hell now pulse rifle damage and this was tested with a 540 round per minute pulse rifle that being autumn win our crit damage against ads for one bullet was 2208 for a burst damage of 6624 and body shot damage per bullet was 1302 with our burst damage being 3906 now with the 20 percent buff given to pulse rifles this increased our damage to 2650 per one bullet in that burst and 7,950 in that burst if they were all crits. For body shot damage, it's 1,563 per single bullet and 6,252 per burst on the body. But long story short though, this was a 20% buff though against minor enemies. Checking out with our sandbox patch notes. Now hand cannons. This was tested with a 140 round per minute all stringer. Crit damage was 9,292. Body shot damage was 6,195. Now post this 20% buff, that increased our damage to 11,100 and 7,434. So a nice bump here, guys, in damage. Sidearms. This was tested with Buzzard, which is a 300 round per minute sidearm. Crit damage is 5,689. Body shot damage is 5,058. Now, post-test, with our 20% buff, this is 6,827 per crit and 4,870. Scout Rifles. Pre was doing 7,216 per crit and 4,416 per body. Now, with that 10% buff, that increased our damage to 7,937 per crit and 4,967 per body. Now, moving on to aggressive frame SMGs, most notably our Ikelos SMG. This is the Ikelos in its pre-form, and this is the Ikelos in its post-form. Definitely a nerf here to recall. Now, rapid-fire fusion rifles. Bungie increased the burst damage by 15, putting its damage per burst from 245 to 260, and its damage per bolt from 27.2 to 28.9. This can kill all resilience levels in seven bolts. Now, currently, in-game, the bolt damage number is rounded to 28 per bolt, but post buff in game, the bolt damage number is rounded to 29 per bolt. I just want to keep that in mind, guys, because there's a lot of people that saw 28 beforehand. And so if you're just looking at it in game, it may not look like that good of a buff, but this is pretty substantial. And we're going to be breaking down rapid fire fusions all this week, guys. Everything from Zealot to Likely Suspect to our Nia Muna fusion rifle. This is a very nice buff. Now, Trace Rivals increase base damage by 4%, 12 to 12.5. Also reduce precision hit multiplier from 1.4x to 1.35. Essentially, our crit damage goes from 16.8 to 16.9. So again, not much is changing in its optimal time to kill. But what is changing is the forgiveness. They also increase the effectiveness of the stability stat at reducing flinch by 10% at max stability. And of course, it scales down at lower values. Now, PvP damage, we were getting 17 per crit and 13 per body with an optimal TTK of 0.73 seconds. Now, post change, we were getting 17 per crit and 13 per body. In frame by frame in Premiere, there was only about a two frame difference in time to kill. Personally, guys, I was using trace rifles. We played with them a bunch. There is a play to be made for them. Half, the ammo economy is the thing that's the most punishing with trace rifles. On top of that, in regards to our legendary trace rifles, I just find that the exotics perform way better. Again, alongside our fusion rifles this week, we'll be breaking those down. Now, did this buff apply to anything inside of PvE? Turns out, no, which should be obvious, but every now and then this could overlap. I was actually hoping it would, but no, the damage here against Carl, against ads is the same pre versus post. Now, rapid fire frame sniper rifles. Bungie reduced the recoil by 50%. This is substantial. And this means your follow-up shots will be a lot easier. They also increase total ammunition by 30%. So again, more of a PVE change, but this is a substantial buff. Pre mid-season batch, Cloud Strike's base mag was 24 total. You can actually crank it up to 28 with two arc reserve mods. And these were the numbers for other 140 round per minute sniper rifles, 140 with a backup mag plus reserves, extended mag, extended 
extended mag plus backup mag plus reserves you get the point however with this change though clown strike base mag was increased to 31 total clown strike plus two arc reserve mods is 37 total now guys this is a major change because clown strike has very good dps it's rapid fire it has those lightning strikes that are hitting but the main thing is it's catalyst which grants you triple tap you can land so many shots now with clown strike and you're refunding yourself ammo constantly and you're doing it very fast and we're going to be doing some dps checks this week but i'm extremely impressed with the mag size increase here big big change and the change across the board for our other rapid fire sniper rifles is also very nice now moving on to our exotics final warning can no longer mark targets through time barricades tested and confirmed now teraba teraba got a substantial nerf here guys reduce the amount of ravenous beast energy generated while taking damage from three percent to one percent they also reduced the zoom from 16 to 15 now pre it was hitting at 22.5 meters posts were down to 20 meters that is a hefty nerf here to range with that being said though in regards to ravenous beasts keep in mind the bulk of that perk that you accumulate is when you're dealing damage obviously when you're receiving it is really really nice but notice they target it when you take damage from three percent to one percent still big but if you're an aggressive player obviously you're still going to get to ravenous beasts i would argue and say that the range nerf is going to be the one that a lot of my pvp players are going to feel the most now the time it took to reach full ravenous and this was tested in pvp and at carl pre was 2.96 seconds against carl and 3.35 seconds inside of pvp now post at carl is 8.23 seconds and in pvp it's 14.8 seconds now keep in mind guys these numbers can be inflated but point is it is much longer to truly take advantage of teraba and ravenous beast you have to be the one going for damage now moving on to revision zero four times a charm now reset when entering hunter's trace mode meaning you can't get those eight shots off but they increase pv damage of hunter's trace by 25 percent now pre-testing against carl was 43,771. that's per crit and his body damage was 14,543. and against ads it was 86,667 per crit and 28,795 per body now post damage buff that increased our crit damage against carl to 54,714 and 18,179 per body and against ads it's 130,000 per crit and 43,192 per body. Interestingly enough, that's actually a 50% increase in damage against miners as well as elites. But against Carl here, it was a 25% damage buff. Now in its two round burst mode, which is the hockey heavy burst, pre-update, it was doing 2,411 a crit with a total damage of 4,822 per burst against Carl. Now its body shot damage was 1,509 per shot with a total damage of 3,018 per burst. Now against ads, it was 4, 1,773 per shot with a total damage of 9,546 per burst. And his body shot damage against ads was 2,987 per shot with a burst of 5,974. Now this was the one that got the hefty buff. The Hake Heavy Burst Mode guys got a 75% increase in damage. This picked our damage up against Carl to 4,219 per shot for total burst damage of 8,438. Substantial jumps here guys. Per body it was 2,640 per shot for a total burst damage of 5,280. Now against miners and ads, this increased our damage to 10,023 per shot for a total of 20,046. You probably want to cross. That's substantially more. We're talking roughly like 109% increase in damage. I know, but hell, I'll take it. Now its body shot damage is 6,272 per shot for a total burst damage of 12,544. So big, big gains here. Now keep in mind, what's contributing to this damage increasing on top of Revision Zero getting these buffs is because Pulse Rifles got a 20% buff across the board. This applied to Revision Zero. However, this did not apply to its Sniper Rifle 4. Keep that in mind. But the Hockey Light Burst Mode also received this damage buff. However, not against Carl. Those numbers are still the same. And just like our other weapons, we saw damage values increase against Miners and Elites. But against Carl here and other Majors, we did not see an increase in damage. With that being said though, the Hockey Light Burst Mode did see an increase in 20% more damage against minor enemies now moving on to other exotics auto rifles these bad babies got a 25 percent buff in damage sweet business pre-testing these were our damage numbers post testing this is what we're hitting now auto rifles go burr now service regime also saw damage buffs across the board but again the same damage against majors and of course carl here but still a nice buff guys we're talking a 25 percent increase in damage which is potent now moving on to cerberus plus one cerberus was a little different because it's just a weird gun guys like 
I'm gonna have to do some individual testing on this one. Really, what we needed to do was do like a damage phase after a boss, see what we were doing pre, and then compare it to post damage values. That's just comparing it here now. It's really hard to keep up with. But considering Cerberus is an auto rifle, it should definitely be getting that 25% damage buffs. And that includes its exotic catalyst, which pretty much turns it into a shotgun. Now, Monte Carlo, the same thing here, guys. We saw a buff there in its damage, ramping up even at Markov chain times one to times five. Hard line, same thing. Nice buffs across the board. Quicksilver Storm also included in this. And this is great because Quicksilver Storm got fixed. Now, Tommy's matchbook. Tommy is cranking out some impressive numbers here, guys. Against miners and elites, you've got that 25% buff. But when overheated, we're really cranking it out. We're talking over 5,000 damage per crit against minor enemies. And if you've seen some of the leaks, Tommy is going to be melting next season. Now, did Vex Mythic Class also receive a buff with other auto rifles? No. I know. This is confusing. It's a fusion rifle, but at the same time, its impact in rate of fire fall in the same archetypes as high impact auto rifles. Now, we did not have any pre-testing for this, but based on what we've been hearing in the community, Vex Mythic Class did not get a buff against miners or elites. Malfeasance. Now, Malfeasance also got a buff in damage by 20% alongside other hand cannons. Lumina also saw an increase in damage here, guys, going from 13,000 to 15,611 per crit against adds. Sunshot also got a buff in its damage. Everything from its impact damage, including its explosion damage, received that 20% buff. Ariana's Vow. This is one that we were all wondering, would it too get a buff, considering it's a hand cannon, even though it's a special weapon? And turns out, it did. However, still the same here against Carl, which means it's still the same against Majors. But, against Miners, as well as Elites, we did get that hefty 20% buff, which is substantial here on this special hand cannon. Now, Sidearms also got a 20% buff. Cryostasia saw that 20% damage buff, including its freeze damage, which is interesting. Trespasser, it too received the damage buff. Everything from its crit and body shot damage, as well as Unrepentant, also increasing its damage. Keep in mind, though, again, just like everything else, no increase against Majors. Now, Devil's Ruin, also another sidearm. This was a really interesting one because it has this, like, fusion rifle form, right? But across the board against minor enemy types and elites, we saw that increase in damage. Even in its fusion rifle form, it went from 8,894 per crit to 10,673 per crit post-change. So very nice. Now, Final Warning also saw this damage buff going from 10,129 per crit to 12,154 per crit post-change. Rat King also got the damage buff, guys. And again, we're kind of going through all these just to make sure they receive the damage buff. But handing out 20% damage buffs here is beautiful. Now, Pulse Rifles. Pulse Rifles got a 20% buff, which includes Graviton Lance. Now, Graviton is a two-round burst pulse rifle, but keep in mind that first shot deals relatively small damage, and it's that second shot that deals the hefty damage. But pre-mid-season patch, it was 11,507 per burst, and post, it was doing 13,807. Now, Collective Obligation, we also saw that buff in damage of that nice 20%. And guys, I've mentioned it before, but Collective Obligation is so good. The fact that Bungie just gave it a 20% buff on top of everything else, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be making another build very soon. Outbreak Perfected, also got the 20% buff. Bad Juju as well, which applies also to String of Curses. No Time to Explain, got the buff, and that includes Time Chasm. Yes, even Time Chasm against ads went from doing 1,192 damage per shot, which is 3,576 per burst, to 1,430 per shot post midseason patch, and 4,290 per burst, which is very nice. Now, Scout Rifles. Now, Scouts didn't get as big of a buff, but it's still a 10% damage buff. Polaris Lance saw a nice increase in damage here against Miners, which of course is going to scale with everything here. When we talk about Polaris Lance, Perfect Fifth, feel free to check out our build here with Polaris Lance. A very good scout rifle when laying on damage, guys, and procking ignitions back to back. Touch of Malice also received that damage buff, and this includes Taken Blight damage. Yes, even the Taken Blights pre-testing was doing 18,300 plus 167. Post-testing, it was doing 20,130 damage plus 183. Now, this also applies to Dead Men's Tail, which also applies to Cranial Spike. Symmetry, which is one of my favorite scout rifles in the game. I wish more people would use it, but it too received that damage buff. Even at Revolution times 20, we saw that damage buff as well, going from 34,401 to 37,841. So guys, that is pretty much all of our pre and post testing that we have to share with you. One final note, Firepower, which is a mod that creates orbs when getting a kill with your grenade, is currently bugging out. Essentially, the kill feed shows that you create an orb when getting a kill with your grenade, but no orbs are actually being generated. So for the time being, guys, you may want to slot firepower out for something else until this gets fixed. Now, as far as rapid fire sniper rifles, as well as DPS for them, and of course, rapid fire fusion rifles, we will be testing that more extensively this week. We need to test kill ranges as well as
as consistency, which rapid fire fusion is feeling the best. And as far as rapid fire sniper rifles go, I honestly just want to see what Cloud Strike can do, man. With the ammo economy it has now and that 50% drop there and recoil, guys, this could actually be your meta. If you enjoyed this video, a like is very much appreciated. A lot of work is put into this and big shout out to the team for putting so much work to get this together. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.